Is Lauren there? Hello. How you going? Hello, Lauren. First obvious question, how are you? Personally, oh. health-wise. Yeah, fantastic. So excited uh, with the announcement today and absolutely stoked to be joining Port Adelaide Football Club. Yeah, I could, couldn't be more humbled and excited. So when did it all begin for you, this process of being sought out or did you seek out the job? Yeah, I was recently having contact with the football club and I think just in getting to know particularly Juliet Haslam and Chris Davies through the process, um, yeah, it became clear pretty quickly that this is a place that I want to be in a program I want to be heavily involved with. So super excited to be now part of Port Adelaide Football Club as the new AFLW head coach. So is it fair to say you were sought after rather than you applied? Oh, I think the love is mutual, Rich. <laughs> okay. Um, so the big question is, how do you uh, how do you see yourself first up as an AFLW senior coach? You know, the question of the experience... How do you work through that issue? Yeah, I think if, if you do um, a little bit about me, obviously 10 years of teaching experience. I was coaching well before AFLW came to be. And, uh, yeah, I think my background as a player and, and as a 10-year-plus teacher and, and coaching in the talent pathway since 2013 places me really well in this role. The first task that you're on your mind, what do you think is the first things you've got to do? I think it's quite obvious building building the team around us on and off field is is the first task ahead and you know culture forms the biggest piece of that for myself and and for the other the other staff that we already have in place so uh, yeah just super excited to start building an on and off field team of support staff at the footy club to to make this program great. Is there a philosophy of what style of coaching, what sort of game you believe Port Adelaide should play in in AFLW? Oh, there's no doubt the Port Adelaide brand of football is highly competitive, contested, uh, smart footy players who use the ball well. So I think you'll see that that certainly comes into our AFLW program as well. And a really big piece for me, and I know this is aligned with the footy club, is having good people involved. So culture's going to form a really strong building block of, of what we're building. So the obvious question now is you've got some pretty easy wild cards to play in the market. Is Aaron Phillips? fall into that wild card factor for you? Yeah, I think there's a number of players we're looking to speak to in the not-too-distant future, and with the Phillips family history at Port Adelaide Football Club, we'd be mad not to do our due diligence and, and have that conversation with Erin. Anyone else on your target list that you want to nominate early? Oh, I think uh, quite happy to, to take the pressure off any players that we're keen to talk to and just leave that with the footy club to, to drive those conversations and myself and we'll see where we land and let you know when, we, when we've got something to tell you. So what do you know of Port Adelaide? Obviously steeped in tradition, 150 plus years of highly successful uh, football club and uh, just a space that I'm really keen to join. I know one of the early phone calls I had was with David Kosh and he was really keen to talk to me about the Wolfie background and and the hard work, which is something that really resonates with me. Um, and certainly embracing the expectations of the footy club is, is something that appeals to me as well. What about the expectations of season one and the ones that follow? What What's realistic in your mind? I think it's realistic to expect that we'll have a, a great group of people working really hard to continue the success at Port Adelaide. I think obviously we're in a space now where the AFL's yet to announce when the season begins and... We're waiting on some clarity around player signings. So I think, um, you know, you will see that as, as we build our list and as we build our field staffing as well. Are you OK with late August or does it feel a bit too rushed for you? Oh, we will we will perform when, when is required and, and will be dictated to by the AFL route. Yeah, it's um, obviously earlier than, than every club in the land had expected, but we will we'll absolutely be ready. Hey, Lauren, Robbie from Channel 7, congratulations uh, on the role. You mentioned some of the players you may be targeting. When can we expect some announcements about uh, who's going to be playing for Port, Port Adelaide? I think we've got to be pretty mindful, obviously. Adelaide's gone from a one-team to a two-team town pretty quickly, and with this announcement now, there'll be, uh, there'll be a fair bit of work to be done over the next couple of weeks. So 
Um, we're also guided by CBA, which is currently being negotiated between the AFL and the Players Association. So I can tell you that we're, we'll be doing a, a lot of work over the next number of weeks in terms of player signings. And, um, yeah, you'll definitely hear when we have some news. You mentioned your teaching background. I think 10 years as a teacher, I'd expect, like most AFLW teams, you'll have a, a core group of young players. How much does that help you in um, guiding them, those young girls? Oh, there's no doubt teaching experience helps with every element of life, I believe. And, yeah, certainly the, the background that I have as a teacher, but also coaching in, in the talent pathway with younger people will, will serve me well in this role. And I, I can't wait to work with the next generation and, I think I also want to highlight that we've got such an incredible group of, of people already in the program. Uh, Naomi Maidman as list manager, Juliet Haslam as AFLW, head of AFLW and Rachel Spall, and I think amongst our team will, will be really well placed to, to work with the new generation and also uh, existing AFLW players that we're able to sign. And last one from me, if you had to pick one thing that enticed you to the gig, what was it? Was it purely that they were the first ones that came calling or was there something particular? <laughs> That's a bit of a cheeky question. Uh, look, to be honest, I'm very much a values-based person and, and culture is something that really matters to me. And, and so very quickly understood from both Juliet Haslam and Chris Davies uh, the environment at the footy club and, and what's important. And it very much, very much matches with, with what's important to me. And my partner's also from Adelaide, so I've got a, a really strong connection in, in South Australia and, and some strong family connection of Port Adelaide people. So... Yeah, there's huge appeal there and I think also being able to build a program from the beginning, while some might think it's too big of a job, I, I just embrace that challenge and I know that we're really well placed as, as a football club to create the best environment that we possibly can for, for our athletes. Thanks, Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Liz Walsh here. Welcome Hi, to Liz. South Australia. Yeah. Um, is this going to be a full-time role for you? Are you moving to Adelaide permanently? That's correct. The role's full-time, Liz. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, you're an AFLW Foundation player, former captain, premiership winner. Drawing on all of that experience, what sort of culture is it that you're wanting to create for the inaugural team? Yeah, I think I touched on it before, Liz, and it's a really great question around culture. I think, um, you know, being a good person is really important, as particularly with athletes. I think that you know, so many people look up to athletes and coaches now in my position as positive role models and I, I take that um, very seriously in my life. So I'm looking forward to supporting that around alongside Juliet Haslam and, and Rach Spawn and, and Naomi as, as key people in our program just to guide and develop our athletes and, and our people across Port Adelaide Football Club because, yeah, culture is so valuable and I think it creates an environment for high performance that is really the focus for us. How much of a say will you have on the playing list, do you think? Oh, I think it'll absolutely be a team effort. I, I do want to highlight Naomi Maidman as our list manager. She's done an incredible job so far, preparing as best as she possibly can for um, hopefully an upcoming sign and trade period. So, yeah, it's certainly a team effort across the four of our staff um, and existing staff at the football club to, to work together in that. And Naomi's the list manager and she's just been amazing so far and I can't wait to support her further. There are uh, lots of reports and rumours that Emily Bates is fielding calls. Uh, will you put, we, we do, do talk a lot about Erin Phillips, but will you put in calls to Emily Bates as well? Oh, there'll be a number of players across across the competition. I think, again, going back to due diligence and building the best possible program that we can, uh, there'll, be, there'll be a whole range of players that we speak to in the coming weeks. You were part of a Brisbane Lions side that was um, hugely impacted by expansion when the Suns came in and your uh, former coach, Craig Starsevich, he's been quite vocal in his disappointment at how expansion negatively affects the foundation clubs. You're now joining an expansion club. What are your thoughts on his comments? Oh, I can completely understand where Craig's coming from and Craig's been a huge mentor to me in the past and I, I played through those days of rebuilding um, post that initial expansion period. So, yeah, I completely understand Craig's position and, and the work that he and Bree Brock at the Lions have put into rebuilding the footy club after being almost obliterated by the initial expansion. And, you know, I do know also that Craig's really supportive of, of me being in this role and um, is looking forward to, to seeing myself and our team here at Port Adelaide having some success. 
Last question from me. Uh, obviously, some other sort of big AFL news today is Gill's resignation. I'm sure you know him through your playing career in the AFLW. Um, some are saying that his fast tracking of the women's league will be one of his lasting legacies. What are your thoughts on his time as AFL CEO and now his retirement? Absolutely. I think everyone in the industry knows that Gill's press conference in 2016 to accelerate the uh, AFLW competition had a huge impact on all of us and particularly myself and those of those of my generation, the older players, we were initially told 2020. And so um, having retired in 2021 with five seasons under my belt, I'll, I'll be forever grateful for AFLW coming that little bit earlier as a player. And yeah, certainly Gill's had a massive impact on the whole industry during his time as CEO. And um, I'm sure that everyone will acknowledge that with the remainder of this season. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Liz. Hey, Lauren, hey, Jace here. Oh, oh, sorry. Take it away, Jace. No, you go. <laughs> um, Lauren, I really have just uh, congratulations on the new gig. I, I sort of Thank just you. want to know um, what sort of game style can we expect from you? <laughs> is it sort of a fast attacking or as a defensive? What sort of uh, game style can we affect, uh, expect from you this uh, the upcoming season? That's a great question, Jace. I'm, I'm a real believer that the most enjoyable footy is when you're scoring goals. And so you expect a game plan based on uh, working to score um, and also that pure competitiveness of, of being able to win one-on-one -on -one contests is going to be really key. But um, I'm really focused on building our list initially because I don't think it's worth having a game plan that um, doesn't match your list. So... Yeah, while, I, while I'm a really strong believer in my philosophies around uh, the best version as a spectator, a player and a coach is, is when your team is scoring and kicking goals, um, we will have to formulate a game plan that suits the list that we're able to build. Obviously, you're stepping into a, a two-team town. The showdown is such a big focus and it's going to be for the first one. What can we expect from the uh, Port Adelaide versus the Crows for the first one? Oh, how exciting. Um, I don't know how well you can imagine it, but I've already been dreaming about Adelaide Oval and never tear us apart uh, just before the first bounce. So, yeah, it's just such an exciting space for South Australian footy and um, for Port Adelaide Football Club in particular. And I'm pretty keen for that to be a home game for us, that's for sure. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I'll pass it on to Josh. I'm sure he's got a question as well. Yeah, thanks. Congratulations, Lauren. Uh, you mentioned Josh. that... You meant some. You mentioned those fans and, and never tear us apart. A lot of Port Adelaide fans or, or young female Port Adelaide fans have inadvertently started to go for the Crows in the AFLW because that's been <laughs> the only option. What's your plan to, to win those young fans back to, to Port Adelaide? Oh, I um, I'm not sure how true that is. To be honest, you might know people yourself, but certainly have a Port Adelaide supporting young niece Esme ready to go and. A uh, nice little photo of Esme this morning in her port gear. So, no, I think uh, Port Adelaide members and supporters will be very much excited for this and uh, we will do our absolute very best to represent them in, in the best way possible. Uh, you mentioned some of the, you know, the great people that you're going to have around you, um, you know, Naomi and, and Rachel and, and, and Juliet. It is still, it's shifting, obviously, but from a coaching and, and background stuff, it is still quite a, a male-dominated industry. Do you, do you, take pride in, in being part of, you know, a, a, such a star-studded female lineup at Port? Yeah, I think uh, it's important to highlight that we are a team and whilst I'm the head coach and today's conversation will be about me, I, I'm really excited about the team that we're building and, uh, you know, we'll bring in great people. There's already a, a range of great people, men and women, at the football club already. So I'm also excited to build our assistant coaching team and, and looking forward to those conversations to come in the next few weeks as well because that's going to be a really another key piece of our puzzle in, in building up our AFLW side of the football club. If it is an August um, start date, how, do you have any idea logistically how that works in terms of you know how quickly you'd need to assemble a list and just how big a job that would be? Yeah, obviously that's been all part of the conversations and... We are a national competition and the AFL uh, will advise us on sign and trade dates, draft dates, uh, when we're able to start pre-season and all those things around that. But rest assured, we're doing everything we possibly can in between um, to prepare as best as we can. Um, beating the Crows in a grand final, was that part of your um, 
<laughs> audition process for this job? <laughs> oh, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm sure it wouldn't have hurt, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I cheekily do enjoy the fact that my last game of footy was beating the Crows in a, in a grand final at Adelaide Oval. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do everything I can to continue that. Uh, a lot of the time, you know, we, we see um, certainly AFL clubs in South Australia target South Australian players. In a dream world for you, will you have a, a largely local playing list, do you think? Yeah, like I've mentioned Naomi Maidman, our list manager previously. I know um, there's many conversations across the competition and being an Adelaide-based club and an SA proud club, we're, we're pretty keen to have com continue conversations with with those original SA based players. Um, and, you know, part of part of us coming in this late into the competition, it does mean that there are hopefully opportunities for SA born talent to come home and, and play at Port Adelaide. Um, you mentioned um, Naomi would do a lot of it, but in terms of doing your, your due diligence and going after some of those big names, will you, will you personally have conversations with people like Erin? Yeah, I think, again, going back to the role that we have and, and the team that we have, that we're absolutely keen to do that. And I'll be I'll be key in that team for talking to players who, who are interested in coming to our football club. What's your pitch then? What had, If you're, um, if I'm Aaron, it says, sell me the Port LA Football Club and your vision. <laughs> well, I think we've probably spent 15 minutes going through that. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, culture is going to be a really big part and, we're looking for players who want to be the hardest worker in the room and, and bring their teammates along with them and represent Port Adelaide Football Club with pride. Lauren or Chris, um, Lauren, when are you going to? Do you know when you're going to form your coaching panel around you and how many you'll have? The, all those conversations, Rich, are happening at the moment and, and will continue. Obviously, this today's announcement is a really key part of that. So, yeah, they'll absolutely continue those conversations over the next couple of weeks. Um, Chris, maybe just talk us through uh, why Lauren was a was a standout um, among the people you interviewed for the role, and what it means to Port Adelaide to have a coach appointed. Yeah, thanks, please. Uh, as as Lucas mentioned, um, yeah, I'm, I'm filling in here for for Juliet, who um, is not um, feeling 100%. So, firstly, obviously. Yeah, it would have been great to have Lauren down here and and sitting next to to Juliet. But we we know how COVID is impacting us all at very short notice. And Gill's press conference as well pushed things back. So I appreciate you waiting. Uh, but Liz, to, to answer your question, obviously um, Lauren's background as a, as a teacher uh, was significant. We were able to clearly see her ability to drive culture. We got a lot of feedback. Uh, from people at Carlton and also Brisbane as to her ability to do that. And as you've seen today, a person who presents extraordinarily well, who brings like fantastic energy. Uh, so from my perspective, after talking to Lauren, uh, you know, over a period of time, it became clear that, that she was um, the best candidate for the role. And when just... should? Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, when you, when could we expect your first um, player signing? Do you think? Well, a lot of that depends on the you know, the AFL coming back to us with dates of sign and trade periods, those types of things. Um, I think we've been saying, you know, at least privately behind the scenes, that we think our first signing into our AFLW team will, will be of you know someone who is already part of the AFLW competition. So, you know, the minute that that becomes clearer from the AFL, you know, I imagine that we'll be in a position to confirm pretty quickly after who our um, first signing will be. Chris, Robbie here. Just while we, we've got you, mate, can we have a quick update on, on Robbie Gray and, and Leah Leah, how they're tracking for the weekend? Uh, look, Robbie, I, what, I'll, what I'll do is I'll leave that for Lucas to provide something later in the day. I, I think right now, um, you know, we, we were really mindful of tidying up Ollie's situation yesterday in order to make sure that today was about our AFLW program and, and Lauren Arnell, um, who should um, absolutely 
you know, be the focus of, of this particular press conference too. But we'll update on, on our injuries later on today. No problems, mate. Is August enough much. time? And how you going, CD? Is August enough time, uh, do you think, to, to get a team ready to go? Uh, whether we think it is or not, where it's it's most likely that that's going to be the case. So uh, Juliet and Lauren, Rachel, Naomi know that that's the date that right now we're pushing forward with. So it's going to have to be the time. Uh, 